The M1 Abrams tank's primary weapon is its M256 120mm smoothbore cannon, capable of engaging heavily armored targets with devastating accuracy. An enemy positioned as far as four kilometers away is still within range of this powerful gun. While the machine guns mounted on the turret provide the crew with the means to suppress closer, lightly armored threats. Precision is enhanced by a fully stabilized gun mount, allowing the Abrams to maintain accuracy, even while moving across uneven terrain. Its gas turbine engine generates an impressive 1,500 horsepower, giving the tank the ability to push through rugged environments at speed. Power is delivered to two massive drive sprockets, which rotate the heavy Caterpillar tracks that carry the vehicle forward. Its unmatched combination of survivability, firepower, and mobility makes the tank both formidable and nearly untouchable on the battlefield. First entering service in 1980, the Abrams has undergone decades of refinement, with the latest model being the advanced M1A2 variant. The tank takes its name in honor of U.S. Army General Creighton Williams Abrams, who commanded forces during the Vietnam War and later served as Army Chief of Staff. Since its debut, Abrams tanks have been deployed worldwide, cementing their role as America's principal battle tank. Nearly 2,000 were sent to the Persian Gulf during Operation Desert Storm, where they became decisive in the campaign, along with subsequent conflicts in the Middle East. Inside, safety systems such as blowout panels, smoke grenade launchers, and depleted uranium armor layers provide critical protection against threats ranging from RPGs to modern anti-tank missiles. This here is the driver's hole. Over here you have the driver's display panel. It controls the fuel. It shows you how fast you're going. It turns your lights on and off. Over here is the driver's T-handle. This is how the driver drives. Down here you have the parking brake and the night vision driving device over here to the left. This here is the loader seat. To my right we have the ammunition ready rack. We can hold up to 18 rounds. We have a sable round inside the ready rack. In the loader seat, other than loading rounds, the loader is also in charge of radios and communications. Here we are in the tank commander's position. Right here is his gunner primary sight extension so he can make sure gunner and him are on the same page. Over here is the commander's display unit. This is where he controls the tank. This is where his thermal imaging system pops up. To my right down here, we have the gunner's control handle, or the TC's control handle, and the crows, which is our common remotely operated weapon system handle right here, which controls the M250 cal machine gun. So this is the gunner station. This is my primary site, the site that I use to shoot most targets. This is the auxiliary site. This is the thermal site. And this is where the coax is the 240 machine gun is mounted. This is part of the manual elevation system, and then this is, or on the other side, is located the uh, traversing mechanism for manual. This is my hydraulic handle, so I can traverse the gun with hydraulics. Moving a 70-ton armored vehicle like the Abrams presents a logistical challenge that requires careful planning. The Army frequently relies on rail transport to move not only tanks, but also entire units and heavy equipment across the country. 
Railroad networks connect major army depots to critical transfer hubs where equipment can be shifted to trucks, ships, or aircraft depending on the mission. Before each large-scale movement, the Army conducts pre-planning drills to confirm that all rail assets are properly configured. For transporting oversized vehicles like the Abrams, specially designed Department of Defense flat cars known as DODX are deployed. These heavy-duty rail cars are built in two variants, a 54-foot model rated for 100 tons, able to carry a single tank, and a 68-foot version rated for 140 tons, capable of carrying two Abrams at once. After the tanks are loaded onto the rail cars, securing them becomes the priority to ensure safe transport. This is achieved through a combination of wheel blocking, and tie-down systems. Each Abrams has seven road wheels per side, which are blocked to prevent rolling during transit. Tie-downs are then attached, with chains and turnbuckles connecting the vehicle to anchor channels built into the flat car. Once positioned correctly, the anchors are locked into place ensuring the tank remains stable. The tie-down chains are arranged in a symmetrical pattern, ideally at a 45-degree angle, to evenly distribute stress. Soldiers then use spanners to tighten the turnbuckles, removing slack and locking the Abram securely in position. With vehicles of this weight, securing is a critical step and mishandling could have catastrophic results. This raises another question. How are tanks actually driven onto the rail cars in the first place? When loading from a marshalling yard, the process is straightforward, as tanks can drive directly from the ground onto the rail cars without ramps. At sidings where the track is elevated above ground level, ramps are required, allowing Abrams tanks to climb onto the cars under their own power. The loading process must be carried out with precision to avoid accidents. Three soldiers typically supervise each vehicle, one stationed on the rail car directly facing the tank, and two more positioned on either side to monitor the track overhang. The soldier in front directs the driver with hand signals, guiding the tank's movement with absolute care. Although transporting armored vehicles by rail may seem labor-intensive and risky, it remains one of the most efficient inland methods. Over the decades, the Abrams has continued to evolve with upgrades like the System Enhancement Package, or SEP, which introduced advanced armor, improved electronics, and battlefield networking capabilities. Operating this machine demands rigorous training and discipline, as the crew of four, a commander, gunner, loader, and driver, must function seamlessly as a unit. With decades of service already behind it, the M1 Abrams shows no signs of slowing down. As technology advances, the Army's most powerful tank will continue adapting to meet the challenges of future battlefields, remaining a cornerstone of American armored dominance for years to come. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content like this.